Hello, this is Jack from Historical Archery, and today we're going to check out the Song Dynasty Chinese crossbow reproduction um, around the 900 AD to the 1200 AD time period. This is a reproduction made in collaboration with many people involved. The stock is made by Duncan from the Modern Arm Brewster. Strongly recommend you to check it out. He makes crossbows of all designs. I like that he's very interested in not just you know European crossbow designs. He likes all crossbows around the world. So awesome um, crossbow maker that I recommend you to check out. Um, another thing is the trigger is made by a Chinese uh, machinist uh, from mainland China, but unfortunately um, he can't make any more due to the current situation there. Um, this is made of brass. Historically, they are made of bronze. Um, so the trigger um, was hand fitted by Duncan to make the stock. And the prod, well, there's a variety of prods involved. These two prods here, this one is made by Archery Bowman. It's uh, about 290 pounds at 26 inches. And then this prod is also made by him. It's a laminated bamboo with wood. The other one is hardwood back with bamboo. Um, both of these designs were used in China, although they didn't use Ipe, they had most likely mulberry uh, or bamboo laminates um, or local Chinese hickory. Um, they obviously didn't have American woods. So when it comes to the Song Dynasty, there are very few Chinese crossbow reproductions. Um, because um, first of all, these come from China and crossbows are actually banned uh, in China. So unfortunately, you want to make this, uh, you're mo you most likely have to be doing this abroad. So that right there makes it much less accessible. Um, but also, there's just less interest in Chinese history. And the Chinese repeating crossbow or the, uh, the Han Dynasty variants, they get a lot more attention than this one. Even though the Song Dynasty was one of the golden ages of crossbows in China. Um, it was also the time period where when early gunpowder was first used, um, but th during that time, gunpowder weapons were very unreliable, um, you know, in 900 AD. So if you want something to shoot reliably at a distance f with an armor-piercing weapon, this is your best bet at the time. So I made a video about the Han Dynasty Chinese crossbow, and I hope you enjoyed that video. Later on, I might make one on the Warring States period, um, also the Tang Dynasty. But um, this, the Song Dynasty crossbows, um, we're basing it around the 900 something to 1,200 AD period time period, uh, right at the, you know, right at the Mongol conquest period. So during the Song Dynasty, the three-piece trigger is still being used. It's just a very rugged design. A simple design that you can mass produce in an arsenal and these things can be hand fitted to any wooden stock. So let's compare the Song Dynasty crossbow design uh, compared with the earlier ancient designs. The primary difference that I find is there's no stirrup on the ancient designs and the stirrup is added on these later designs which I find quite interesting. Um, one of the reasons that this could be the case is that if you saw from the artwork um, and the written text the Song Dynasty crossbows on average have a shorter power stroke with the shorter power stroke uh, you don't need to worry about shortening your your kick length with a stirrup because by positioning your stirrup here you have a shorter kick length in fact the ancient crossbows sometimes have you know um, some knobs here where you can kick instead, which I call it a kickstand, which extends your kick length, your draw length with your legs. Um, but the Song Dynasty one, especially if it's only like 20 inches of power stroke, you can most likely span it with just just the stirrup. Um, in terms of how the prod is lashed onto the stock, um, we just this is actually just tied really quickly for demonstration but of course if I take the time I can just lash it just like how the Europeans lash it it's basically a European lashing method um, you put it right into the stock here and now you have them lashed and if you take the time um, you can really tighten these binds but um, I kinda wanna take it off after so I didn't wanna fully secure this 
um, but this kind of design can accept all kinds of prods. Here's a 290 pound prod that I can add and I love to test it once it's warm again mm -hmm. and in my video you saw the bamboo laminate one. This one's 120 pounds of full draw or about uh, 100 pounds at the current setup. The draw length on this is right now 23.5 inches. Um, I might cut it down to 20 inches when I use this monster because beyond the 20 inch mark I find it very hard to span these things especially with a stirrup. Um, without the stirrup if I just put my feet here I can probably get 23 inches of uh, draw length but with a stirrup I'm looking at only about 20 inches of max draw length kick length. If you look at the artwork depicting Sone Dynasty crossbows such, such as the G Divine Arm crossbows um, they show hornbow prods and we have evidence of Sone Dynasty crossbows with hornbows written in the text especially for the Divine Arm crossbows. However um, you also have besides the uh, the Divine Arm they also had another one which they just called kick crossbow um, and I guess you, you, you span it with your legs is what I assume they mean um, and those they said is made of wood so likely something like this a self bow um, D shape uh, this isn't fully strong um, but um, the thing that I find also interesting is that cavalry crossbows if you look at the artwork also depict um, not as long as this but maybe about four to four point or four five feet long um, the cavalry crossbows depict straight length prods with a stirrup so those might not exceed 20 inches of draw length and um, maybe only 200 pounds of draw weight um, because you have to span this on horseback um, or they were used more like portable artillery with a very heavy crossbow and then they span it dismounted and then retreat you know to do span and then come back I'm not sure how the Sone Dynasty crossbow cavalry would have used their crossbows um, but it, you can also see that the horse archers are supporting uh, the mounted crossbows um, so perhaps they were portable artillery I'm not too sure how they would have utilized these um, crossbow cavalry so there's a wide variety of prods I think during this time it just depends on the region because of course Song Dynasty is big um, but you know it depends on where you are it depends on the time period um, you can mount a Mongolian bow onto this and you can easily shoot it if you want even if it's 50 pounds with this power stroke is still lethal uh, so keep that in mind um, in the southern regions especially after the Mongols conquered most of northern China and central China by the time the Song Empire has shrunk to the southern Chinese most likely they would have used bamboo and wood prods uh, or captured Mongolian bows um, by that time period. Um, so I don't think of you know a specific prod as being used and it's quite dy dynamic depending on the, uh, the situation. Also from Tsui Wei Xianshan Bei Zhonglu um, you have this quote at present day we want to use crossbows with draw strength of two to three stone so about 264 modern pounds to 397 modern pounds um, the crossbow prod should be about 1.6 meters to 1.9 meters and cannot be too long so that short soldiers can still shoot it easily at the shoulder so they do depict very large crossbows with prods like literally 1.7 meters long these are reasonable with uh, this is like the perfect dimension about 200 something pounds and six feet long this is the kind of prods that we're using this is basically a portable artillery piece this is not something you want to skirmish with either you would shoot it in a fortification or in the battlefield you likely shoot it behind a melee infantry like spears of course um, in conjunction with bows it's important to have bows with crossbowmen as depicted um, from the Wu Jing Zhong Yao uh, which you know shows a goose fall formation with crossbowmen and archers likely to balance uh, the weaknesses of both units because of course archers have a faster fire rate crossbowmen have more armor piercing one of the things we added onto this crossbow is we're not too sure how the grip was made so this is just a very intuitive way of making the grip with the trigger guard the trigger guard is very important important because there's no spring here so to have a safety feature it's nice to have a trigger guard here so you can insert a safety and that will prevent this from accidentally dry firing. This is very useful for testing the crossbow for the craftsman, so the trigger guard is used here. But it's also good that you don't bump into it when you're loading it. 
and then for the receiving end it's just conventionally mounted just like how the europeans mount the crossbow this is our assumption because we really don't have enough sources but we do see the stirrup we do see lashings here so logically there's some way of lashing this we don't know exactly how it was lashed but we assume this would be a possible way just like how the europeans do it these kind of crossbows can accept a wide variety of prods as long as it fits the dimensions here so keep that in mind so you just got to make sure the maximum draw length of this will handle the maximum draw length of the stock that's it um, very simple very rugged design um, and you can see duncan does a much better job at making this thing compared to what i do with my hand dynasty crossbow this is a much more professional job he does you know he's much more skilled at woodworking so thanks a lot for this awesome work uh modern arm brewster hey it's jack from historical archery and today we have one of the most forgotten crossbows that was mass produced this kind of crossbow was commonly used against the mongols this is a song dynasty crossbow this is the first prod i'm using just because it's very lightweight so for Song Dynasty crossbows, there are uh, many different types. They had the more hornbow prods, um, which they, they use the words divine arm crossbow. Uh, they had those ones. They also had wood crossbows, which are likely D-shaped. And we're going to test one with a very heavy draw weight. This one here is just my first prod to test with, which is laminated bamboo with wood. 100 pounds at 23 and a half inches draw length. So we'll do some testing and see. And this is based on the Tang Dynasty triggers. Um, I can't find any Son Dynasty triggers, but the, the Tang Dynasty triggers are very similar to the Han Dynasty triggers. So we based it on that. Trigger guard, we have very little information on. So we just made a very intuitive trigger guard. That, that's kind of common sense. Let's do some shooting. This is our prod one, our first bow that we're gonna use. 100 pounds of 23 and a half. Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's shoot this thing. Wow! Oh, that is satisfying, guys. So this is the first prod, the first bow we use is only 100 pounds at 23 and a half, and it's not even designed for a 23 half inch draw length. This thing can actually be pulled at 30 inches, so it's not that efficient for 23 and a half. But I purposely used it just to make sure the crossbow works. So we will test it with a much heavier prod in the future. Stay tuned. You guys ready? Yeah. Riding and playing speed, there is not much. We found the bolt, the arrow. This is almost, this is like 300 yards, I think. 